Right on. Come on, Dave. Let's go. All right. All right. There we go. Hey, it's Barry. And Dave. And Jerry. And Dave. <laughs> All right. Here with Hooked on Headwaters. Another episode. I know we missed last week. Uh, but we're back again. We're going to do some updates with Dan and Jerry as far as how they did this last week. And then we're going to jump into, hang on, we're going to want do a little bit talking about how to properly rig up a four style bait. Are we doing walking bait, Stu? Walking bait and, and walking bait. bait. There's certain ways you need to hook them up and rig them up, or hook them up mostly, and the knots that you use make a big difference in the way that they work. They're going to be a lot more effective if you do it the right way. So hang on for that. Right. We also have the... Uh, we're, we, we will be announcing the winner of the Blue Cypress Lake uh, little contest yep. we had uh, two weeks ago, so hang on for that. And that'll be the winner of the night's stay at Blue That's Cypress right. Lake Side That's Cabins. Right. So that'll be good. So, um, hey, let's kick it off. All right, I'm going to the camera. Bye. <laughs> All right, heads or tails? Heads. It was tails. You're up. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Go What's ahead. Good? How do we go? Good, man. Good. We uh, fished, I think, three days this week. Okay. Um, good numbers of fish. Still doing well. Still catching them. All right. Um, they've kind of changed tactics a little bit. Kind of changed where they are a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're still catching them. Still doing good. All right. So this week we're going to do it again. Good numbers. Good sizes. Uh, yeah, the day before yesterday we caught 25, 30, I think, okay. but not anything five pounds, five and a half pounds, five pounds, four and a half pounds, something like that. Nothing any bigger than that right now. All of them are post spawn fish. Oh, just about ass. Okay, so you're saying mostly <coughs> post spawn fish. Yeah, they're so all post spawn fish. Okay. So, is, so is, is the spawn done? I think it is. What do you think, Dan? I think for the most part it's, it's yeah. about things. You may have a handful of fish out there that are still, but for the most part it's done for this year. Unfortunately, it's sad. That might be uh, <laughs> uh, something to ask Ken. I bet he'd yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. If somebody wants to get hold of you to, take, to get a guide trip, where do they, who are they, where do they get hold of you at? Uh, Website. www.com, Vero Beach Big Bass Fishing Charters. Um, www.com big bass fishing you said that all Vero all Beach all Big Bass Fishing Charters dot com <laughs> Vero Beach Big Bass Fishing Charters dot com <laughs> yeah, that's or it. they can come yeah. to our website or they can come to yeah, the headwaters you'll get the exact information he, Jerry's not a techie guy he can no fish, I'm not and but that's what he does <laughs> but and yeah all sent above his head so but, <laughs> hook him up you're gonna find him over there on that website or on our site hey I got a question. Any change in how you fish with live bait? Um, I think it's changed. Well, right now, definitely fishing shallower because the hydrilla is getting higher and higher. Yes, it is. So anywhere that you were fishing 24 to 30 inches, 20, 36 inches deep underneath a cork before, I think now you're around 18 inches, maybe two foot. All the hydrilla is coming up on the surface now. There are places that we fished two or three weeks ago that it was still three feet below the surface. Now it's 18 inches below the surface. So yeah, it's changing. Um, actually seem like I'm doing better on, on the shiner part on free lining mm -hmm. instead of using the corks in a lot of areas. But I know a lot of guys are catching fish right now um, on top water plugs too, a lot. A lot of top water baits going on right now. So, but yeah, they're changing. They're getting into their, you know, their earlier summer patterns, you know, late spring, early summer, and they're getting ready to do what they're going to be doing for the next three or four months. So it's changed a little bit, but you can still catch fish. Yeah. yeah. So, so we've had a lot of rain in the last few weeks. How so that I, impact? well, it dirtied up the lake a little bit. It looked to me like it dirtied the lake up a little bit. Um, even on the south end, it was a little bit dirtier. Usually it's really crystal clear down there. I actually walked over to the Farm 13 structure. I walked up on the dike, the levee right there to see if they had the gates open. Uh, I kind of figured with as much rain that we had had, they would open the Farm 13 gates up and you know, you'd know you be able to catch you know a lot of fish in there right now, all that bait coming through there. But uh, they were closed. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a typical, Late spring, early summer fishing. That's what's going on right now. They're definitely starting to change. All right. And when you're talking about change, what you're what you're seeing change is they're moving. All these fish that were in these flats in these bedding areas, these thousands of fish that were all stacked in these certain areas, they're they're all they've all dispersed. Um, I'm actually finding now that I'm catching more fish where I was catching them back in early November and December. And then they kind of left a little bit and you know late january and february those fish were not there anymore well, i'm kind of finding now that those fish or some fish are coming back in those areas now but uh it's a lot of smaller fish buck bass you know two to three pound fish you know it's i haven't caught any 
I did catch one a week and a half ago in Kennesville that was eight pounds a customer did. Uh, Kennesville still producing big fish. You just, it's a hit and a miss. Sometimes you go in there and you do well and sometimes right. you don't, but if you do go in there and catch them, they're gonna be big fish. Yeah, right. Okay. So, but yeah, everything's good, man. Yeah, so just go back a couple months, folks. And <laughs> Yeah, so all it goes from then. Whatever he was telling you back then, then just go with that. Yeah, they're actually. I'm finding them right now, man, on on the, on on these ledges again, starting to come off in these canals and this hydrilla. And they, they're just prowling. They're just prowling up and down through these or these ledges and these canals, these little drop offs, pockets in the hydrilla, and they're just prowling back and forth from one end to the next, man. They're just catching those baits going through there. Gotcha. Right, man. How was your week, bud? It was good. It was good. Uh, busy. Uh, been catching them similar to what Jerry's saying a lot of smaller fish, you know, and, and mm -hmm. uh, even little dinks like Sub 12 inch a couple of them, right, right. you know, they got a big attitude. They eat mm -hmm. this big shiner sometimes um, Been catching a lot of fish. I did have some good good quality starting off. Let's see I can't remember my days, but I did have a guy uh, caught a nine even uh, on a shiner on Saturday Nice. But it was the only big fish we got. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the last, yesterday and the day before, had seven, little over seven, two different days. Uh, so, but again, it was the only big fish. Today, we actually had a good day today. I think the kids probably caught, by the time we're done, 35 fish. Uh, the biggest was about five and a half. Uh, but we had a, a lot more, so that the size was a little larger. Got a lot in the three to four pound range. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, getting some size back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice fish. And yeah. and what, what was the problem here today? So I got bass. He got bass paw. And a little bit of bass paw. He got bass let's paw. See, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> it's a little sore. Yeah. That's when you know you're. That's when you know you're on them when you got old bass paw and your hands all roughed up. Yeah. <laughs> we had a good time. I had uh, these guys, these kids today, come down from Georgia. Their him and dad brought them. Very good. Many of them. Okay. Good. Recommended lures. Uh, lures lately, I, most of my trips have been shiners recently, yep. but uh, last week I was catching them good on top water and uh, the square bills. It's kind of the same there spooks, stuff there. that I keep going, and I think it's good for a couple reasons. One, uh, I like my walking baits because I can cover a lot of water, mm -hmm. and if they're feeding up top, you know, I can cover it faster, and we can kind of get into that when we talk yep, about yep. the top water bait, baits. Compared to a prop bait, I can cover more water with a walking bait. And then just a square bill, uh, some on uh, the chatter baits, you know, these moving baits, yeah. sw swimming worm. It's the same stuff over and over. Uh, and there is a lot of ways you can catch them. Uh, but as Jerry knows, when you're guiding, it's kind of not everybody it has the uh, these massive skills like some of these right. professional fishermen that that you know can cast all day long and you know really finesse some stuff. So these moving baits that we find effective, mm -hmm. uh, we tend to throw them a lot more. Right, right. Most guys are that way. There's some things. Over the years, you're on the clients to be able to. Yeah, yeah we have a lot of kids that, that, that uh, young people, that they need to be able to cast and crank, and uh, most of this stuff's pretty effective. The grass is just aggravation. Yeah, yeah right. So. I had two guys the other day that finished shiners early, and we ended up going over around the cypress maze, and uh, I don't really know how many we caught, probably 10 or 12 on artificial um, flukes and bone color zero spooks and black and silver zero spooks okay. and 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 a blue color a bluegill pattern fluke you using the, now, you using the no way pups are using the full size a fluke or the oh, pups the no the, the full size ones the full ones. size, size zero spook okay. yeah okay. and then um there's those three inch three and a half inch flukes mm -hmm. no weight at all and just yeah and they were just smashing it absolutely yeah Yep, flukes are easy. They're a nice, <laughs> easy chill. Yeah. I like to use them with just a little super lightweighted hook. Yeah, you actually, yeah, uh, you turned me on to some of them yeah. hooks. It's got the weight in them already. Yeah, they work really well. A little bit. Yeah. And then well, I'll throw them with an uh, extra wide gap super line. Yeah, that, I think that's the hook. Um, instead of real, I throw it with no weight, but there's enough weight there. Right. I tend to dead stick a fluke a lot. So I like I it. target fish, like when I say target fish, targeting a location, throw their dead stick and just let right. her sink. Yeah. Boom. Boom! I love it. This is like a shiner blow up. I mean, they just blow up on it, man. Yeah, I well, love it. Sinks it. to the bottom and you. That's say, right. About headwaters, I've definitely found is they're always. They seem to always be on these little points. You know, yeah. whether they'll bite There's or not. You know, but it seems to be a consistent thing. You go and fish in like the blue um, Senko style worm, mm -hmm. like black and blue, um, or now the 
Okeechobee Cross seems to be the, good really good. But if they just seem to be. You, 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 I know there's one there. You just kind of know. I do. think what it is is these, well, some of them are, they're just points. They're a flat, so you just got right. a point. Yeah. But I think it's because current comes around them points. Yep. And I think some of them points actually have humps on them. Yeah. Whether it be, you know, 10 to 12 foot of water, and then at that point it comes up to five foot of water, and they just seem to transition onto that right, right there. there. Yep. But yeah, absolutely, and points are good. It does. Especially with a top water plug. Yeah, <laughs> top water and yes. we're just pitching corn <laughs> up there and just letting it sink, like you said, just let that sink. Yep. Just wait, wait, wait. And by the time you think you want to reel, just give it another 30 seconds. When you think you're fishing too slow, slow down. Slow, slow down. down. Exactly. That's right. So, Dave, you got any, uh, anything you want to add to that there? Any more questions? No, I'm good with questions. All right. <laughs> well, we got that's our week in review, so um, we're trying to condense this down a little bit for y'all. Um, you want to go ahead and announce the winner of the contest, and then we'll go ahead and um, sure, the, uh, flip over to the... Come on out here, Dave. Come on down. <laughs> Just stand around. There you go. All so, right. <coughs> go ahead. The rule was that you need to you need to find the misspelled word. So we kind of threw a little thing in there. You want to recap what the contest was? Why don't you recap the what contest was? The last one we were out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were down to blue cyber. We decided to go ahead and go with the mit with the misspelled word because That's right. uh, Jim and Tam uh, Jim and Tammy down there are giving away a free night stay down there at Blue Cypress Lakeside Cabins. So we decided to go ahead, Dave went ahead and mis misspelled a word in right. a video and you had to find that misspelled word, timestamp it, and spell it correctly. Correct. So, right. so there was one additional word there that was not misspelled. It had an uppercase letter. So that word was find. So it was F-I-N-D, but it was uppercase I. That's not misspelled. The misspelled word was Cypress, which was at the beginning of the video. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brewster yep. is the man who found it, and he is the winner of the contest. He gets a free night stay at Blue Cypress Lakeside Commons. Right on. So what so do you need to do? You need to uh, email me, Dave, at Hook on Headwaters. Dot com. Give me your information. I'm going to pass that over to verify it and pass it over to uh, Jim and Tammy and they will hook you up on Absolutely. the night that you're down. If you're if you're um, out of the area, maybe you plan a trip in the future, I'm sure they will hold those dates for you. That yep. date for you. Yep. Great people. Great time. Man, I tell you, they, they take care of you when you're they when really you stay there. Yeah, they're nice, pe nice people. They really take care of their guests. Yeah. So, Good deal. So um, we're going to come up with more contests as we're going through this uh, kind of off, we call it not really off season, but you know, we come into this summertime, things tend to kind of get hot and a little bit different. So we're going to be doing some different type videos and uh, do some fishing videos. Yeah, bring it. Yep, exactly. And do more on the water. On, on the water. water type of. We're actually supposed to do one today, but right. yeah, we just got a yeah. lot oh, of rain right. here, folks. A lot of rain right now. Tournament coming up. And we got that tour the tournament. Tournament. That's us, that right? Just us, our tournament. Tournament. Yeah, the four. Yeah. Yeah. Four. yeah. Team. Okay. Team A. I don't even know who my. I don't. We're gonna come I, up with a really good content. We'll come up with a really good here. prize. I don't even know who my team member is yet. I can't be nice to nobody right now. I don't know who my team member is yet. So here's what we're gonna do, Dave. I'm just throwing this. This, we're gonna just put this out. Oh, she said we're me. We're gonna go ahead and uh, come up with some prize packs, and we're gonna do. We're gonna break it down by. Oh, we're yeah. gonna decide who's gonna, who the winning team's gonna be. Number one, and yep. the weight. The or, weight. Well, actually, the weight. Ooh. The weight or length. Either way, whatever it's gonna we be. We got scales. Can we weigh up? Yeah, weigh let's weigh, 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 weigh. So Hope. I want to know though, who's with who here? I need to start. Well, I thought you strategizing. Were talking smack last week. That's right. Okay, well then we'll. I'll go with Barry. Hey, check that video out. They were Jerry was talking. Smack. Eighteen. From what I right just. Here. What I just. Eighteen. From oh, eighteen. Well, y'all can a on out there in the lake. From what I just heard from Dan, I'm just gonna sit right there at the ramp and do my deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I got to tell you, I've been thinking about this. So, if we're gonna do this tournament, we need to spice it up a little bit. I say if we do it, we cannot fish a shiner if it's shot. Oh shiner, lord. Hold on. No, no. We're fishing shiners. We cannot. Fish a spot with a shiner that we've never fished, that we fished a shot. There you go. Let me start that over again. Go ahead. Dan. Rewind. What are you really trying to say? Rewind. I'm really trying I to actually, say. I actually understood him. That's the sad part. We cannot fish with shiners. <laughs> Where we have fished before. With a shiner, yes. Artificial That's one and all new. Or we could do all new. Something different. And they might be time frames. From 10 to 11, you can fish shiner. 
from from from, from, from eleven to we got to figure eleven to two. We got to figure. We got to figure. This is getting serious now. Yeah, yeah. Official. Well, I want to know. I got I got my little referee. She's gonna give two minute penalties for dropping fish. Everything. So I mean, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this for real. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. So there'll be a couple of prizes there. Yep. Again, who wins? The winner, maybe first and second place as far as uh weight. For us or your viewers? Not you. You get nothing. You get nothing out of this. You get an attaboy. 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 Go do what you're supposed to know how to do. Yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. There you go, folks. So that's where we're at. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this part of the video. Don't go away because we're gonna go from this to on the water action we've got water behind us here so um, we're gonna go ahead and rig up some lures so you how to rig them up the proper way the right kind of knots the right way to work them so that you can increase your catch rate while you're out there on the lake so and we're gonna go before we switch over we want to make sure we thank the Davis yep. House Inn right here in Sebastian that's where we're filming from today if you're looking for a great place to stay uh, near some fabulous restaurants within walking distance certainly from uh, the Davis House Inn mm -hmm. this is your place Call Jim. Um, call Kyle up. They'll be sure to hook you up. Absolutely. If you got, and they, and they can house or uh, you can keep your boat here. So water hookup, electric hookup. So a place that will take care of you. And you got a view like this. And this is the view. Water, nice dock to hang out on. And um, if you want to go kayaking, pedal kayak, yeah. total, totally different on the water experience. Give me a call. We sh we launch right from here. Well, this is one of our launch sites. Right from there. And we'll go exploring the islands and we can go fishing. It'll be a good trip. Yep, absolutely. And you'll find that over on our website, hookedonheadwaters.com. Yes, sir. All right. Off to the lure to the fishing instruction. Pole. Let's do it. All right. See you in a minute. Action. So this week we're talking about topwater baits. Uh, one, like I normally talk about, a walking style bait. This happens to be an old Sammy, Lucky Craft, and also prop baits. Uh, we'll talk about both how we rig them and uh, how I like to fish them. So, uh, walking bait, talking about rigging. A lot of walking baits, I'll pitch this one on the ground so I don't get it hooked. Uh, I put a split ring on the front of my walking bait. All right, let's do that again. So, uh, my top water bait, uh, you can run a split ring or you can uh, tie a loop knot. Uh, only problem in my beef with a loop knot, this happens to be 20 pound fluorocarbon, a loop knot uh, is typically about 50% knot strength, so you got to be careful with how much pressure you put on it. We fish a lot of grass here, so I prefer a, a uh, split ring, and I, you'll want some form of uh, split ring or loop loop knot to give it some extra action. If you tie it directly to the eye, you'll find that the bait does not walk quite as well. Um, also, I fish it on 20 pound fluorocarbon, but as you can see, I have braid here. Um, I typically don't like treble hook uh, baits with uh, braided line because you end up losing a lot of fish sometimes. So what I've done is I went to a, uh, a softer action rod, still a fast tip, but it's soft enough that you won't tear, tear hooks hook yourself in the backside. So uh, walking baits and prop baits, do a little demonstration for you. Okay, so something that I've found with the uh, walking baits that they, they can be difficult to walk if you've never done it before. So to try to get the bait to walk back and forth, what you have to do is you have to get a cadence down with your, the action of your rod tip and the speed in which you reel. Now Dave, if you'll zoom in close, uh, you can watch my rod tip. I bounce my rod tip basically on a, on a slack line, all right? and it gets to walking. Now, if we uh, take a second and zoom in on the reel, you'll find that I don't necessarily uh, reel continuously. Okay, so watch my hand. See how it's not, I'm not, it's not a steady reel. You get in a cadence with it, and it takes a little bit of practice. 
Now all you're doing is you're picking up your slack line and you're just bouncing your kind of bouncing the rod tip on a slack line and it causes the bait to give it that walking action. Okay, so as you can see, I'm not I'm not doing it in a steady reeling motion. I get a cadence going and I I'm just picking up the slack. Okay, so we're going to talk about a prop bait now. Uh, fish is much differently than a walking bait. Um, as you'll notice, there's a prop on each end that spins, creates a lot of noise and activity in water, a lot of bubbles, throws a lot of water around. This happens to be a Smithwick. Uh, it's like a double source. Uh, pretty cool bait, catch a lot of fish on it. Been a lot of fish caught on this bait over the years. So any prop bait that you have fishes similar, similarly to this one. So we'll give it a, give it a go. There's Mr. Shark again. Let's see if we can get him to eat. Watch this. He says no. No shark for you. Okay, so with a prop bait, it's a slower a bait that you fish a little more slowly. Now you can do big, long rips like that. You can do short little bubbles. You can do a combination. Long, long pulls with just a twitch, a little pop. You can fish it quickly with pauses. There's a many, many different ways you can fish with, with this lure. But I tend to like this on uh, a little bit calmer mornings. Uh, I do like it with a little ripple on the water. I think uh, sometimes they can be a little too loud. But as you can see, you can see the little blade spinning there makes a lot of noise and a lot of uh, activity in the water. Okay, so I, I like to uh, fish target specific places with bat baits like these a lot of times. It could be a cattail head, it could be for some of you guys got wooden water, you know, a piece of wood. I'm going to use the piling there as an example of where I like to uh, how I like to fish this bait. So I'm going to cast beyond it, fish it back until I get next to the pole, and then pause it for a moment. Okay guys, so we covered uh, just two of the many uh, topwater baits that you have available. Prop baits, walking baits. Um, you cover a lot more water with a walking bait typically than you will a prop bait. Both can be very effective. Uh, my opinion is you change up your re retrieve speeds until you figure out what the fish want to eat. So not just speed, cadence, and uh, the action. Change it up, get more bites.